is a, this is a very important day in the history of the South Australia Police. Uh, we're celebrating the 70th anniversary of the, uh, the presence of uh, Mounted Carter, or the now Mounted Operations Unit, as a part of SAPOL's operational capacity. So 1st of July uh, 1951 was when the Mounted Carter was created, and this is the first step into a dedicated Mounted Operations capability uh, beyond horses being a common means of transport transportation for most people. So it's been since that day that the South Australia Police have had dedicated police officers responsible for providing an operational presence and also a, a very important ceremonial search and rescue presence as well. Uh, and it's been since that day that we've also dedicated uh, our mounted operations horses as the police greys. And as police greys, they've become a heritage icon for South Australia. The reason that we went for the police greys is because uh, during World War I, uh, the deployment of horses uh, to military purposes saw most of the darker coloured horses being selected by the military, which left the greys as those which were most readily available for uh, civil uh, response activities back in Australia. That's become part of our tradition and it's something that we uh, will continue to preserve, and that is the, the history of the South Australia Police and the, the existence of the police greys. Uh, our Mounted Operations Unit provide a really valuable uh, frontline uh, support to our uh, general duties patrols, uh, particularly in and around the CBD, and I'm sure most people would have seen them deployed. And they've played a very valuable function in uh, public order uh, management as well, with ro protests um, and, and other sorts of activities like that. So it, it, it is a, an asset that we've, bec we've become to rely on, and they've served us very well over a very long period of time and recognising this important milestone of their 70th anniversary I think is uh, something that uh, is, is very worthwhile and I thank you for your um, participation in this small uh, ceremony today. I'd like to hand over to the Minister now to say a few words. Thank you Commissioner. Uh, I'm really happy to be here for the 70th anniversary of this Mounted Operations Unit. Well, Grantley has a friendly temperament, uh, loves carrots, loves attention, and now I'll talk a little bit about the horse. Uh, what you're seeing behind me is the uh, first time ever, uh, Grantley, uh, the Irish sporting horse, uh, first time that a horse has been named over uh, a current commissioner. Uh, very proud of this. Uh, it's a, a wonderful capability that South Australia Police have here. Uh, as you've heard, for 70 years now, the operations, uh, the Mounted Operations Unit have been serving our state with distinction, right across the state. Uh, and Grantley is one of 33 uh, horses uh, that serve in this particular unit. Uh, you see them out on the beat, you see them uh, in Hindley Street on the weekends, you see them at the Christmas pageant, uh, you see them at other uh, venues for uses like crowd control, for example. It's an absolutely fantastic capability. South Australia Police, uh, the only police force in the world uh, to specifically use these uh, police grades. Uh, and uh, this particular horse is, I'm told, 17 hands. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, quite, a, uh, quite a, uh, uh, a wonderful horse. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing him when he's uh, used out on the beat. Uh, these horses, they take uh, anywhere from about three to four years to, to train up. Uh, Grantley behind us uh, is about five years old, and we've got no doubt uh, that Grantley will serve with absolute distinction, just like uh, his namesake has as well. So um, we're really, really proud uh, of this achievement today. 70 years is a very special occasion and looking forward to seeing Grantley out on the beat, helping to keep uh, South Australia safe. Uh, I'll now take uh, questions or, or pass on to the Commissioner about uh, questions about this or any other topic as well. Commissioner, might just ask you a question. Um, just Oh, you met Grantly today. What, what, what's your reaction to having a horse named after you? Well, we uh, we share a lot in common when it comes to hair colour. That's for sure. So, um, <laughs> I was, um, surprised and humbled when I found out that uh, they, they'd named the horse after me. The, the horses are named um, alphabetically, so we do have one horse that's uh, uh, was called Deputy. We've had one called Chief. But uh, as as I learned, this is the first time they've named a horse after a serving commissioner. So, um, yeah, very humbling and. I'm pleased to be able to be the namesake for a, one of our valuable assets. Do you have any Irish heritage in the book? Uh, no, I don't. No. Uh, I do have some understanding of my uh, lineage, but I don't think there's anything Irish in there, apart from the jokes. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just on another matter. Uh, 
Just another matter, just in terms of, it wouldn't be a press conference without the COVID question. Um, mask compliance, are you happy with how it's been going so far? Well, I think we're seeing, um, we're seeing people do the right thing. Um, I've been through the CBD this morning and I've been to a few locations and people are, are wearing masks. They're, they're doing what we've asked them to do. Um, I made it pretty clear that uh, we do have options to scale up our response and make it a mandatory requirement. I don't, I don't want to do that. I think uh, uh, people are willing to play their part in our COVID response and this is one small thing, as much as it may be a small inconvenience. Uh, generally speaking, I think people are trying to do the right thing. In terms as well of compliance of um, mandatory masks within you know, beauty salons, etc., is there an increased um, patrolling or random checks of businesses like that that is going on? Uh, we haven't increased our. Um compliance checking. Uh, we've maintained that presence right throughout the course of our COVID response through 2020 and into 2021. So yeah, those, those resources are continuing to do that. Uh, we haven't had to scale up. Um, and we, we also respond to reports that we receive through uh, 131444 if uh, there are serious issues of non-compliance. And I, I just need to reiterate too that whenever we visit premises, um, our objective is to work with the, the people running those businesses, uh, provide them the information and support they need to get it right. And our observation is most people are trying to get it right. So uh, that's the approach we've taken and will continue to take. Has there been any non-compliance so far by way of uh, any, anyone that's been fined or anything like that? No fines have been issued at this point in time uh, th during this current level of restrictions. And I've, I've not been made aware of any specific serious non-compliance issues. Uh, obviously, there are going to be some small pockets of uh, non-compliance, but uh, that's to be expected. But nothing of a major um, level that would be brought to my attention. So when we introduced the, uh, the restrictions that came into effect earlier in the week, uh, we did make it clear that we were aiming for a one week period, uh, but we also said that we would be watching and monitoring on a daily basis, and that's still the case. There is no decision about when these restrictions will be lifted. Clearly the, uh, the uh, five positive cases from the, the family um, that we were reporting yesterday uh, has given us more to keep an eye on, and the close contacts and those people involved, involved with um, travel between Northern Territory and South Australia. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, we'll see how the numbers go, um, but it is being monitored on a daily basis and the commitment to lift these restrictions as early as possible still stands. Just to double check, are there no changes to our border arrangements at all? No changes to borders. Uh, we're still very concerned about what's happening in some jurisdictions. Uh, so we are maintaining our border checkpoints and uh, ensuring that uh, people coming into South Australia are managed safely if they are allowed to come in as a permitted traveller. Nothing's been reported to me. Um, we understand that this is difficult times for people. Uh, people coming into South Australia uh, are required to comply with certain conditions if they're permitted to come in. And there are some delays on occasion, but uh, once again, people, I think, are in generally good spirits. They understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, and they're generally compliant. Just wanted to know if you have an update on the Goodwood hit and run this uh, yes, unfortunately a 70 year old man was uh, struck by a vehicle last night at about 10 o'clock on Goodwood Road. Um, we are still investigating, major crash are conducting the investigation and uh, anyone who has information about the identity of the driver of that vehicle, uh, we'd certainly encourage them to come forward to police or contact Crime Stoppers and provide that information. Uh, we're very keen to speak to the driver of that car. Well, if the driver of the vehicle is aware of the fact that they've uh, been involved in a collision, then I, I, would, I could only describe that as a fairly heartless and callous act to, to leave the scene of a, 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 a collision where someone's seriously injured. Um, but I'll wait and see what the full circumstances are before I make any particular comment about this, this particular vehicle collision. Uh, not, I don't have any further updates in relation to the, the vehicle type. Um, we did put that out this morning, um, but I just make that appeal to the driver of that vehicle to come forward if they're aware of the circumstances of being, having been involved in the crash. Um, and anyone else who may have information, please come forward. Let us resolve this as quickly as possible. Any questions from the Minister? I have some for the Minister. Thank you, Minister. So Minister David Ridgway is going to be South Australia's next Asian general. Um, 
Um, why was the government made this decision when the Premier did not consider him suitable to be a minister? Why is he suitable to be a SA international representative? So David Bridgeway has obviously had extensive experience, uh, not only just in the trade area, but also as a very successful uh, farmer entrepreneur before that as well. And I've got no doubt that he'll serve our state uh, with distinction as, uh, as Agent General in London. Do you know what he's being paid? Uh, I believe that information is all publicly uh, available. Uh, that'd be a matter for uh, for, for him. Will it be the same as the existing agent general? Do you feel the ahead? Look, I believe it will be the same, but all of those individual details, I'm sure, will be uh, released in due course. But for someone who resigned under the circumstances that Mr. which Mr. Ridgway did, for now to be named to a senior high-profile international position, how does that look for the government? Well, David Ridgway has got extensive experience in the trade portfolio and also as a uh, a successful farmer, entrepreneur before that as well. I've got no doubt uh, that given his 20 year experience uh, in the South Australian Parliament, he'll do a fantastic job representing uh, South Australia in that particular role. Was this part of the deal for Mr Ridgway to go quietly? I think uh, David Ridgway has had uh, extensive experience in the South Australian uh, Parliament, uh, 20 years in fact, and uh, we wish him well in this new role. I think given his experience, uh, both in uh, in his ministry and also as a successful entrepreneur and farmer uh, with the contacts that he has, has right across the world. I know he'll uh, serve in this role with great distinction. Do you think Daniel Gannon will replace him in the legislative council? The, uh, the, 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 the replacement process now, so obviously it now creates a, an upper house vacancy uh, and that'll be a matter for the, uh, the Liberal Party to now uh, work through in due course. So I'm sure there'll be a, a gathering, a meeting of the State Council uh, and then there'll be a process to then uh, uh, elect uh, a, a replacement for that particular role. So uh, at this stage, I'm not aware of any uh, nominations, but I'm sure that uh, there will be quite a suite of candidates. Uh, we're a democratic party. We, we welcome that democratic process, and I've got no doubt that the State Council of the Liberal Party will pick an outstanding uh, candidate to replace David. Okay, thanks, ladies and gentlemen.